It's not right on. He doesn't have it on right. Yeah, I think he needs to put that a little straighter on his head. There we go. He's hooked on the podium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she did try to get it. All right, your name, sir? Carlos Carvajal. Carlos Carvajal. All right, Mr. Carvajal, you're here today in case number... 2020 MM 3756AO. And in that case, um, you're charged with uh, a violation of your pretrial release, of the condition of your pretrial release, and that you are not uh, supposed to return to the residence at 1346 Sophie Boulevard and you went back there. Yo volví porque no sabía. Yo le pagué. Yo le dije, yo me voy a mudar, ella me dijo que estaba bien, y cuando regresé, él me había sacado las cosas. Le dije, I'm sorry. Well, I, I didn't know, I actually had paid up and everything, and I said I was going to move, and I went back in order to pick up my things, and she had all my stuff already outside. All right, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Um, you can go back there one time, but you must call the sheriff or the Ope or Orlando Police Department, whoever, whoever, you must take a law enforcement officer with you to go and get your stuff. You can't just go by yourself. Okay? okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry, I'm okay. okay. Uh, I made a mistake. And you have another place to stay other than Sophie Boulevard, right? No, yes. no tengo. No, I don't have one. Where are you going to stay? Where are you going to live? Entonces, ¿dónde se va a ir a quedar? ¿Dónde va a ir a vivir? Bueno, yo buscaré un sitio. Well, I have to look for a place. Okay. Um, all right, I'll set bond the amount of $500. Um, no contact with Gabrielle. Oh, no, that's the wrong person. Um, who was it? Maria Riena, Arena. No contact with her, and you're not to return to the Sophie Boulevard address unless you have law enforcement with you, okay? And I'll point a public defender to represent okay. you on that case as well. Yo, and I'll take no act. I'm going to take no action on the battery uh, bond. I, just, I don't think it was intentional. Yo, uh, Yes, your bond will stay in place. No, no me ha pasado. Yo en sí no he no 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 he hecho nada, no ha pasado nada. Simplemente ya quería que me fuera de la casa. Yo le pagué. No pasó nada. She just wanted me to leave. From she just wanted me to be out of the house. Es por gusto. Yo lo me equivoqué. Sorry si me equivoqué, Bobben. Pero no ha pasado nada en sí. Ella lo quería que yo me fuera de la casa nada más. Ya tiene otra persona allí. Stop. That works because I'm not going to, I don't want you to go back there. You're not allowed to go back without law enforcement one time. Okay. That's it. Okay. okay. Until this case gets Pero, resolved. All righty. Okay. Thank you. Pero tengo Come on. Gary Reyes. This is just one of them days. Although, you know, there's not as many. It's all the trespasses. You speak English, right? Yeah, just look straight ahead. Yes. Your name? Gary Angel Reyes. Is he not in a, need an interpreter? The victim does. No, uh, oh, the victim does. Gotcha. Okay. All right, alleged victim, excuse me. All right, Mr. Reyes, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit, and I do find sufficient probable cause. All right, uh, my understanding is that there's someone in the box. 
Yeah, my father, your honor. Yes. Okay. All right. Nope, he's still there. You're still there, interpreter? Yes, your honor. All right. Who, who, uh, he can start interpreting now. Who is in the, uh, in the box? ¿Quién es la persona que va a testificar que está en el podio de testigos? Garibaldi Reyes. Garibaldi Reyes. All right, sir, um, you are the alleged victim in this case, is that right? Señor, usted es la presunta víctima en este caso, ¿cierto? Sí. Right. Yes. Uh, and uh, you live with, and, and uh, Mr. Reyes here lives with you at the Chatham Break Street address? ¿Y el señor Reyes vive con usted en esa dirección del Chatham, la calle Chatham? Sí. Yes. All right, if I set a bond for him or release him, is it, do you want him to be able to have contact with you and come home? Y si yo le doy fianza para que él salga bajo fianza o bajo cualquier otra circunstancia, ¿a usted le parece bien que él pueda volver a su casa? Eh, yo lo, pero con una condición de que usted, el juez, pueda darle un tiempo a él para que busque dónde estar, porque no creo que sea bueno que él viva con nosotros. Uh, yes, with the condition that the judge tells him that he has to find a place to live because I don't think it's good for him to stay with us. Okay, so so you don't want him to come back to your house. Entonces usted no quiere que vuelva a casa. Eh, es lo que le digo, yo no quiero hacerle daño a él ni que él no haga daño a nosotros. Yo necesito que él se busque un trabajo para que entonces pueda mudarse de la casa. Well, I don't want to hurt him in any way, but I don't want him to hurt us either. Uh, what I want from him is to get a job so, so that he can move to another place, get his own house. Okay, but my question is, do you fear him and do you, is it okay for him to come back to your house uh, if he gets released? I can order him to go live somewhere else if that's what you think is best. Bueno, la cosa es, si usted tiene temor de que él vuelva a su casa, si yo lo doy libertad bajo, bajo fianza, o si lo libero. Pero yo también le puedo ordenar que de una vez se vaya a otro lugar, que se mueva a otro lugar de una vez. Eh, bueno, eh, eh, puede ordenarle que, que, que sí, que se vaya a otro lugar. Uh, Well, uh, yes, you can order him to go to another place. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Reyes, I'll set bond the amount of $500. Actually, he does qualify for PTR, doesn't he? Yes, sir. All right, I'll release you with PTR conditions. You're not to return to the Chatham Break address. So you're going to have to have another place to go. Do you have a place, a friend or other family member? Uh, not, not right now, but uh, I guess I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, and you're, um, you, you can return to your home one time with law enforcement to get your items, anything, any personal items you need, clothes or, or toiletries, anything like that. You can go back there one time. Okay. Okay. Um, you need, and you'll need, oh. go ahead. Puedo volver a la casa, pero una sola vez en compañía de la policía para recoger su ropa, sus eh, efectos personales para cuestión higiénica, va a tener que buscar otro lugar y son, va a salir con libertad provisional. Um, and you're not to have any contact at all with your father at this point um, until eh, the case gets resolved. Puedo hacer, eh, no va a tener contacto con el padre hasta que se resuelva el caso. All right, no guns, no alcohol, no weapons, no drugs. Se le prohíbe armas, se le prohíbe alcohol, se le prohíbe las drogas. All right, thank you. Thank you for Gracias. Me, Mr. Reyes. Thank you. Gracias por venir, señor Reyes. No contact. No, uh, you know, I'm not going to get involved with that discussion again. We'll be here for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, in PTO. And one time return. Now we can do telephone. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Interpreter. You're very welcome, Your Honor. Uh, there we go. Teleconference, right? All right. We have the Portuguese interpreter on the line. Yes, Your Honor. Already great. Have you been sworn today? No, Your Honor. All right.
Do you hear that? Yes, Your Honor, I heard. Do you, do you, all right, she's going to give you your oath one more time. Yes or no? You don't need on the headphones, you guys. Uh, Your Honor, I didn't hear anything. I apologize to the court. <laughs> I could push him down. Tell me to get rid of that. All right, we're going to try it one more time. Yes, sir. Portuguese to English, right? English to Portuguese to the testimony given today. I do. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. He can put the headphones back on. No, oh, we don't have headphones. That's right. It comes out. No, he doesn't need them. That's right. I, I was wrong. All right. Your name, sir? Uh, My name is Marcelio. All right, sir, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of aggravated battery on a person uh, over 65 and uh, at domestic violence and also an aggravated child abuse. O senhor está aqui acusado de assalto com agravante a uma pessoa com mais de 65 anos, assim como abuso de criança. Não é, não é não é isso. Não é isso. That's not correct. Uh, I'm, I'm already there on you. The age, the age of the alleged victim is not in, in, in any way um, uh, alleged properly or at all. Well, there would be, I mean, I think that there is aggravated battery. It's just a question of whether they're over 65 or not. Um, and would be domestic. I mean, that, that allegation, I think, is there. It's just that the enhancement over, of over 65 is a bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, uh, Your Honor, this is the interpreter. I, uh, I apologize. Yeah, do, you yeah. want, do, you, do you want me to relay that observation that you made to uh, the officer of the court? No, that, that's fine. That was, a, that was just a discussion. Um, all right. I do find... Um, Probable cause for the because let me make sure. Yeah, for the aggravated battery domestic violence because it was a, it's a stick. So, um, but I don't find for the over a person over sixty five. I think probably what occurred is they just put the wrong statute number in. Um, but so what I'll do is, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gom Salima, do you have a place to go and live? Eu não vejo fundamento para o assalto com agravante, uh, embora a questão da idade e da violência doméstica possa ser discutida. O senhor, uh, senhor Gomes, o senhor tem aonde viver? Sim, tenho. Yes, I do. Uh, and it's not at the uh, fifth, 15617 Marina Bay Drive address, though. Somewhere other than e that. Não é... E é em um, em um outro lugar que não, no número 15617 da Marina Bay Drive. Sim. Yes. Who will you be living, uh, who or where will you be living uh, if, if you uh, bond out? Com quem e onde o senhor vai morar se eu lhe der fiança? É, eu vou morar num hotel. I'm going to move to a hotel. Okay. Um, all right. I will. Uh, I will set bond in the uh, aggravated battery amount of five hundred dollars. The um, aggravated child abuse five hundred dollars. Um, no return to the address at one five six one seven Marina Bay Drive. Eu então estou estabelecendo a sua fiança para o assalto com agravante. No valor de 500 dólares, estou estabelecendo fiança na questão de violência doméstica. No valor de 500 dólares, com a condição de você não retornar ao endereço 15617 do Marina Bay Drive. You don't have, have any contact with, uh, at this point, with Caleb. E você não deverá 
ter contato algum com Caleb. Your Honor, the victim is here. Oh, okay. Does he speak Portuguese as well, or does he speak English? Do you speak English? Both. She speaks English also, Your Honor. Perfect. All right, who's, who's in the box? Your name? My name is Naira Ribeiro Lima. And how are you uh, related to, to uh, the defendant? Um, he's my husband. Who is Caleb? My son. All right. Is Caleb here? No, he's not. All right. And is he... It's Caleb. Six, he's 16? Exactly. All right. Well, what do you want to tell me? Wagner is a good man, a good son, good father, good husband. We got married 20 years ago. I know more Wagner than my own parents. And uh, we had tough times right now because we moved to here, he lost his job. Um, I am the visa student, F1, and uh, we stay living here um, almost one year, uh, two years and three months. So our savings is gone, and we we have some problems, and um, we start to to uh, go in, into an um, immigration law for asylum, and some bad things is happen in our country and uh, maybe this um, too much stress and um, too much pressure in Wagner's shoulders made him well, lose his mind. I know it's so not a... a well, I know just some, okay, uh, let me ask you a couple questions then. Okay. Um, is, do you object to him being able to come home? No. So you want him to be able to return home? Is that right? Yes, because I have four children uh, during this marriage and all of them is missing dad. All right, and you don't have any fear that if he comes home, he'll uh, perpetrate any violence on anyone? At the first, not. I'm not. You're not sure that he won't do that? No. The only um, way I, I, I can protect you if I have him go live somewhere else. Yes, I, I know. But I don't think he will be able, will be able to do it another time. All right. So you don't you you feel safe if he's if he returns home? Yes. All right. Okay. I'll set those bonds. I will allow him to return to the home. No hostile contact. So tell him he's not to have any hostile contact with anyone in his family, please. Okay. Eu vou autorizar as fianças e vou lhe autorizar a retornar para casa sem qualquer uh, contato hostil no futuro. That means you can't raise your voice. Can't yell at them, can't shake your fist at them, nothing at all that's hostile. O que significa você não poderá elevar a sua voz, você não poderá gritar, não for, você não poderá dar o punho ou fazer qualquer outra menção de violência. Okay. Okay. You, uh, alrighty. And no, no uh, guns, no weapons, no drugs, or no alcohol. Okay. Right. Nem, nenhuma arma, nenhum álcool. Nem um tipo de violência. Ok, trata-se apenas é, desse pequeno problema com meu filho. Não tem esse outro ponto que você citou desse assalto. Isso não existe. But there was a problem with my son, but there was no aggravated assault. Ok, well, if you have a problem with your son, after you're home, you got to walk away. Even if he provokes you, you can't yell at him, you can't raise your nothing, okay? Or you'll be back in jail. Uh, just... If you have a problem with your son, you should leave. 
Você não pode elevar a voz, você não pode gritar, você não pode ameaçar. Afaste-se. Correto. Um, excuse me. That's correct. Excuse yes. me, Hunter. Uh, uh, I don't understand about the assault because uh, he he was not doing it. Well, uh, that may be that that's that's to be determined. The al the allegation and then the uh, affidavit contains is that he struck Caleb. Um, and so as a result of that, that's what the charge is based on. It may very well be that if it didn't occur, then he may not get charged or he may be found not guilty or, but at this point in time, based on what the affidavit says, I do find there's sufficient probable cause. All right, thank you guys. Next case, please. Okay. You too, by the way. Tyler Scott. How you doing, Your Honor? Your, name's, your name? Tyler Robert Scott. All right, Mr. Scott, you're here today because you're arrested on several charges. First of all, battery by strangulation, domestic violence, neglect of a child, unlawful desertion of a child, uh, false imprisonment, domestic violence, and exposure of sexual organs. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and do find sufficient probable cause. Um, um, your Honor, I, I have no Please affidavit. Please don't talk about the facts, sir. Your attorney is saying don't talk about the facts. What attorney? did you want to say, though? As long as I, it's I not to, about I just I just wanted to state that um DCF is now involved in the case due to the fact that I have a five month old daughter and um my wife is, is nineteen and she's pregnant again also. And uh this is the eighth domestic violence charge that she has put on me. And obviously, Your Honor, you know, I shouldn't have to state the fact that, you know, she's gonna come in and eventually tell you what's going on like she always does and they're going to end up dropping the charges so if it's possible due to all this going on in our life right now if i um if it's possible that i can get off on um with a uh, ankle bracelet and stay with my dad or... well you can stay with your dad but it's not it won't be an ankle bracelet that's not that isn't possible no i was just putting that in there for any any okay. to make sure that y'all so y'all can make sure what's going on you know Okay. All right. I did find sufficient probable cause. All I do on the battery by strangulation, I'll step on the amount of uh, $1,500. I'll stay the other bonds. Um, I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. And I'm not going to take any action on your driving while license suspended and your no motor vehicle registration that you're out on bond. On. I'll right. leave those in place. And that too, um, I was out there, I was in the process of getting that done too. So. Well, I understand, but I'm not, I'm not going to revoke those bonds. I'll leave them in place. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you're, you uh, are not to return to the address um, where your um, girlfriend and your child and your unborn child are living, uh, and that is the 712 West Washington. You're not allowed to go back there, and there's no contact at all with Alyssa Crow um, or anyone who resides there. And uh, uh, you can return there one time with law enforcement to receive uh, to pick up any items you may need. Okay, um, you're also not to have any contact with the neighbors who were. Oh no, that is Alyssa Crow. Um, Your Honor, I have no. Uh, you're also no, not to have. Excuse me. Hold on a second. No neighbors. The other Alyssa person Crow. in no contact is Miss Pollock. Yeah, you can't have any contact with Miss Pollock as well. All right. No guns, no weapons, no drugs, no alcohol. Um, as I said, you can return there one time, but you have to go somewhere else. But no contact with any of those individuals as well. All right. May I ask who my attorney is? It'll be one. I point public defender's office. That's up. I can't determine. They're the ones who actually make the decision as to who that person is within their office. So they'll, someone will come and see you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Nic uh, Nicholas Brown. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. You're Mr. Brown? Yes, I am, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Brown, you're here today because you were uh, arrested on charge of possession of cocaine. I do find sufficient probable cause, but after reviewing the uh, arrest affidavit, uh, set bond amount of $1,000, appoint a public defender to represent you. I'm sorry? I said I found sufficient probable cause based on the arrest affi or the affidavit. I'll set bond in the amount of $1,000 and I will appoint a public defender to represent you. Oh, oh yeah, yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. All right. 
You're all set. Thank you. Jose Ortiz. Your name, sir? Your Honor, good evening. Your name? Jose Antonio Ortiz Rosario. Right, Mr. Ortiz, you're here today because you were arrested on charge of grand theft motor vehicle. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find there is sufficient probable cause. Um, I'll set on the amount of $1,000, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Your Honor, about the motor vehicle, that's, that's negative. Please don't talk about the facts, sir. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the facts. Your attorney doesn't want you to talk about the facts of your case. The attorney will come and see you, or if you bond out, you need to make an appointment to go and see them. All right, thank you. When am I going to see my, my attorney? Either if you bond out, you need to go see them. Otherwise, they'll come and see you as soon as they can. He's around, the attorney? Does he have a trespass? Judge, he has a trespass case. Oh, come on. Another case. I'm under a separate affidavit. You want the case number? Yeah, I don't have that. Is it from the, is it from the same incident? Not yes, but it's under a different case number. So they, they have an MM for that trespass? All right. Um, just, just um, and it is from the same thing from when he was there? It, he, was tra he was previously trespassed from the airport and. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 2020 MM 3740. All right. Step on him $100 on the trespass. No return to the airport. Okay. So there's, uh, there's a $100 bond on the, on the uh, trespass and you're not to go back to the airport. It's one of the orders of the bond. Okay. All right. We'll point a public defender on that as well. Demetrius Cooper. Hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Uh, oh, there it is. I did have it. It got attached to the wrong one. All right, Mr. Cooper, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge. Now these are all messed up. That's a king. Uh, on a charge of uh, trespass on property after warning. I've reviewed the charging affidavit, and I do find sufficient probable cause um, uh, on that case. I'll step on the amount of uh, $250. Don't go back there. I understand that those are that's your family's uh, place, apparently. Um, but the uh, the implication from the affidavit is that you're not supposed to be there. Okay? Yes, they don't sir. want you there. All right? I understand. Um, I'm not going to take any action on the battery and criminal mischief that you're out on bond. I'll leave, you, I'll leave those bonds in place. Judge, on the criminal mischief, it was no action already taken. Okay, great. That'll work. And appoint a public defender if not previously done so. Your name, sir? Michael King. All right, Mr. King. Yeah, these things are all messed up. Hold on. There we go. Got it now. All right, Mr. King, you're here today. Because um, you're arrested on a charge of first degree murder with a firearm and possession of firearm by a convicted felon. There is no bond on those. Thank you. I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. All right. Away, don't you? Do you want to keep those separate? Oh, okay. All right, your name, ma'am? Caitlin Alois. Oh. Yeah, no bond, no bond, yeah. See, I had Jane Doe next. The Jane Doe is mental health? Yes, sir. Mental health? Yes, All righty, thanks. Yes, yeah. That wasn't surprising based on that arrest affidavit. <laughs> All right, Miss, uh, is it, how did you pronounce your last name? Alois. Oh, that's what I thought, Alois. Okay, ma'am, you're, yeah, reset it, yeah. Yeah, it's mental health, so reset it. Um, All right, ma'am, you're here because you're arrested on a charge of, uh, or on two active felony warrants. One was for violation of probation in your uh, carrying concealed firearm case, and there is no bond on that. Is that the only case? There's also, see, where is that? Oh, and you're also, uh, based, uh, after that warrant was attempted to be served on you, you were arrested on a charge of resisting an officer without violence. Um, I do find sufficient probable cause for that, and I don't have the paperwork. Here it is. Uh, and I'll set bond in the amount of uh, $500 on that, appoint a public defender on those. I'll uh, take no action on the bond on the driving while license suspended that you are out on, though. So that'll, that'll stay in place. Thank you. Yeah, fumbling through this today. Your name, sir? Marcus Fisher, sir. Uh, Mr. Fisher, you're here today because the state of Florida, or because you were arrested on a charge. Man, these papers are just all in my 
arrested on a charge, first of all, uh, of burglary of a structure, grand theft motor vehicle, criminal mischief, petty theft, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of cannabis, um, escape, battery of a law enforcement officer, and resistant officer without violence. I have uh, reviewed those charges, and I do find sufficient probable cause on all of those. Bond will be uh, as follows. In the burglary of a structure, I'll say the bond at $3,500. The grand theft motor vehicle, $1,000. Criminal mischief, $100. Petty theft, $100. Possession of controlled substance, $100. Uh, possession of cannabis, $100. Um, escape. I never escaped. I never even got away, no, sir. No, 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 no. Don't talk about what happened. I, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. A, escape is one of those things where you can actually get away or you can try to get away, and they put it all under one name. But don't talk about the fact because your attorney is, is already jumping up. She doesn't want you to talk about it. Yes, sir. Um, I'll set by the amount of $500 on that, and then the battery and law enforcement officer and resistance officer without violence, an additional 100 on each of those. And I will appoint a public defender for you on all of those cases. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it was thirty five hundred. Um, yes. Did I did I, did I say thousand on that one? Yeah, and then I think a hundred on the rest. Yep. Yep. That's it. Your name, sir? Brian Torres. All right, Mr. Torres, you're here because you're uh, arrested on a charge of reckless um, of DUI. First of all, um, the problem I have, state, is. There's no operation. No, the, I, I was sleeping. Oh, don't, don't, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Um, you don't want to talk about what, ha what happened or didn't happen at this point. But they, the arrest affidavit or the charging affidavit indicates that they came upon a parked vehicle and that the defendant was in the vehicle. He certainly sounds like he may have been impaired, but there's no indication that the vehicle was running or that the vehicle's um, keys were around for to make it for a... Uh, um, actual physical control case. At least there's nothing alleged that says that. I'm, I'm just looking at the affidavit, Your Honor. No problem. Hello? Hey. I Your Honor, I would ask for 24 hours. All right. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and set the bond. At five, I'll, I'll leave the bond at $500 um, so that you can, you won't be punished by the fact the state's going to have 24 hours to take a look and see if they can get additional information. If they can't get any additional information that indicates that there is operation or actual physical control, then you'll be ROR'd tomorrow. But if you want to bond out today on the 500, you can, and then the state will still have to try to find that other evidence uh, when they try to go forward on the case. Okay, so the bond is set at five hundred dollars, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. But you'll be brought back tomorrow to to let to tell you whether or not they found that. Okay, if if you don't bond out, my my car only had three tires when when it was parked. Well, a vehicle that's inoperable that was caused by the operation of the vehicle while impaired does not mean that the vehicle is inoperable for purposes of DUI. So that, that, but okay. the issue that, that I have with this is something separate from that, and they're going to take a look at it. We may see you tomorrow, or if you bond out, uh, good luck. Your name, sir? I'm Aaron Rivera. Okay. There we go. What about Sam Smith? Sam Smith is mental health, Your Honor. Mental health. I could have predicted that one. So. All right. Uh, Mr. Rivera, you're here because you're arrested on the out-of-county warrant. Uh, bond is set in the amount of $3,000, and that's a warrant out of Seminole County. I uh, should count yourself lucky. There's actually a case from Seminole County where they have a bond set. Almost all of them are no bond. So it's $3,000 for Seminole County. Thank you. I don't have the money to get out, so... Just have to bond out. That's the only way at this point. They, they because there is a bond set. They may contact. I guess they will. They're still contacting. Yes. Um, uh, one of the judges here will contact Seminole County and ask if they wish to reduce that bond or give you um, some other alternative release uh, strategy. Uh, but uh, and so if they do that, they'll bring you back once we hear from the judge. Okay. Okay. Uh, how long do I have to sit here until they could tell me what I'm going to do? 
Well, unfortunately, right now, because of the pandemic uh, and the order of the, the Florida Supreme Court, there is no transporting being done. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but they are going to check and see if they can if they can uh, reduce it or something. You will have a public defender who yeah, will be helping you with that. That's right. You have a, a lawyer appointed to represent you on that. Your name, ma'am? Ariane Cruz. Ms. Cruz, you're here today because you're arrested on a violation of probation warrant, uh, and there is no bond on that. And I will appoint a public defender to represent you. I have a, I have a uh, attorney. A, a private attorney? Yes, I have uh, okay. Allie and Blankner. All right, have they entered a notice of appearance, do you know? Um, I don't know. Okay, well then I won't appoint a public defender if you're gonna hire somebody, that's fine. I already hired him, yeah, I went to court on, on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem then. I won't appoint him. And then, and then uh, Kendall or, um, or uh, Mr. Blankner can handle the case for you. Okay? Good luck. Come on, Pope. Patrice Pope? Right Your name, ma'am? Patrice Pope. All right, Ms. Patrice, Ms. Patrice Pope, you're here today because uh, you were arrested on a charge of aggravated battery, domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. And um, is there anyone here? Is, Ms. is Willie here? No, no. no. All right. Ms. Pope, do you have somewhere else to go and live other than the Beachmont Boulevard address? Yes, sir. I'm originally from Georgia. My parents, they came yesterday to get my kids, and right now they're waiting for me. So the only right. thing I need to do is just get my stuff, and I'll be gone. All right. Then what I'll do is I'll set bond in this in the amount of $500. I'm going to order that you not have any contact with Willie Pope uh, um, while this is going on. You're not to return to 5830 Beachmont Boulevard, okay? And except for one time, you can go there with law enforcement to get your items, okay? No drugs, no alcohol, no uh, guns, no weapons. Actually, she, she qualifies for PTR, so I will release her pretrial release. So there will be no bond. You don't have to have a bond on it, uh, but you do have to live up to the conditions of pretrial release. Thank okay? you. No problem. Thank you. Alrighty, good luck. Your name, sir? Dover Adams. All right, Mr. Adams, you're here today because you're arrested on a domestic violence battery charge. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. Uh, do you have another place to go other than 11898 South Orange Avenue? Yes, sir. Um, where is, and who are you going to be living with or where is that? Uh, 12321 Holly Jane Court, Orlando, Florida, 32824. All, right. All right, you do qualify for pretrial release. I'll release you PTR. Um, no guns, no weapons, no alcohol, no drugs. No, you're not to have any contact at all um, with Bernice, Dover, uh, Bernice Adams, excuse me, okay? Yes, um, at this point in time. Now, it may turn out that it can become made a no hostile contact or it can be made, you can have contact, but right now, since we haven't heard from her, you have to have no contact. You're not to return to that South Orange Avenue uh, address, except for you can go back one time with law enforcement to pick up any personal items you may need, toiletries, clothing, such as that, okay? Yes, now, I'll appoint a public defender to represent you, and if the public defender talks uh, to your uh, wife um, and uh, she indicates she wants to have uh, contact with you, then they can always go and ask the trial judge to change that condition, yes, okay? Thank you, sir. All righty, good luck. Thank you. Your name, ma'am? Amanda Cuddy. Ms. Cuddy, you're here today because you're arrested on a domestic violence battery charge. I have reviewed the charging affidavit, and I do find that there's sufficient probable cause for that. Um, do you have somewhere else to go other than 3040 Aloma Avenue? Yes, sir. We're going to go, where's that? 280 Longwood. And who lives there? My aunt. Okay. Um, all right, I'll step on the amount of $500. Um, yes. Did someone say something? Oh, okay. $500. Um, you're not to return to the 3040 Aloma Avenue, uh, number E5, except for one time you're allowed to go there with law enforcement to pick up any items, personal items, clothing, toiletries, anything you may need, okay? Um, and uh, no contact with, um, I guess, with your mother? Yeah, Yvette. Uh, yeah, with Yvette, okay. That can be changed, but... For right now, you can't have any contact. You need to go live with your aunt, all right? Any questions about that? Nope. No guns, no alcohol, no weapons, no drugs. All righty, thank you. Thank 
I can just put these in a different stack. Yes. Okay, that'll make it easier for me. All right, your name, sir? Thomas Guest. Mr. Guest, you're here today because uh, you were arrested on a charge of battery domestic violence. I have I read the charging affidavit. I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. Uh, do you have another place? What's that? Oh, okay. Who's in, who's in the box? Amber LeBlanc. All right. Uh, you solemnly swear to test me out to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. All right. Um, how are you related to Mr. Guest? We're married. And um, how would you feel about him returning home? I'd like a no hostile contact. Uh huh. Okay. So you're, you don't fear him as long as he stays under control. Is that right? Correct. I understand that if I allow him to come home with no hostile contact, that's just words, and uh, I can't really protect you. As long as he's going to do what it takes to go to doctors and therapy, just no hostile contact. Okay. Understand that, Mr. Guest? Absolutely. No hostile contact means you can't raise your voice, you can't raise a hand, you can't, can't yell or say anything uh, hostile to her or do anything. Don't throw something across the room or act in a bad way. You understand that? Absolutely. Because because you know what will happen if that happens and she calls law enforcement. Guess what? You violated a condition of your bond. You'll be back in jail with no bond. Yes, sir. Okay? All right. He does qualify for PTR. We'll uh, release some PTR conditions. Um, so there won't be a bond required. You'll just have to live up to the conditions of PTR. You're not to have any guns, no weapons, no alcohol, no drugs, no hostile contact with your wife or with any of your children. Um, and uh, you'll, well, I'll allow you to return back to, to, to your home. Okay? Thank you, sir. All right. Um, listen, she's given you an opportunity. You need to, look to, to, to follow that. Reading that charging affidavit, it does sound like there may be some issues that are going on with you. There are people that can help you. You know, you can't help yourself in this situation probably. So you need to uh, listen to what she says because it sounds like you have a nice family and you're going to lose that family if you don't do what, they, what you need to do. Yes, and you know you need to do it, I'm sure. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Come on, you know. Your name, sir? Devontae Hill. Mr. Hill, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of uh, battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit. You find sufficient probable cause. Um, do you have anywhere to go other than the Henton Lane place? Yes, sir. Who? who where is that? And who uh, do we? My, my okay. mama. All right. You do qualify for pretrial release. I'll release you under with PTR conditions. Um, you're not to return to the Henton Drive uh, uh, address and not to have any contact right now with Mary Etienne, who is, I guess, your mother. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. No contact with her on the short term. That can change if your attorney, and I will appoint a public defender if your attorney uh, talks to her and she lets the judge know that that's okay. But for right now, you're not to return there and no contact. You can go there one time uh, to pick up uh, your personal items, clothing, toiletries, stuff like that, okay? Okay. All right. No guns, no alcohol, no weapons, no drugs. Yes, All sir. All right. Thank you. Your name, sir? Robert Tellis, Elliot Kendrick II. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kendrick, you're arrested on charge of battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. Um, do you have anywhere to go other than the fitness um, circle address? Yes, sir. All right. Where is that? My father's house. Okay. Um, I will set. Uh, actually, you can, you qualify for pretrial release as well. I'll release you PTR, so it won't be a bond required, but you do have to live up to the conditions of pretrial release. There'll be no guns, no weapons, no alcohol, no drugs. You're not to have any contact with. Um, yes. No. Oh, Samara Kendrick. Yes, sir. My wife. All right. Yeah. No contact with your wife on the short term. That can change if uh, if you uh, she contacts the judge. But for right now, no contact, and you're not to return to your home at Fitness uh, Circle. Uh, except you can go there one time mm -hmm. with law enforcement to pick up your personal items. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, good luck. Thank you. Your name, sir? I'm sorry. Uh, Leo Mahoney, sir. Mr. Mahoney, you're here today because you're arrested uh, on a charge of battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. Um, do you have another place to go other than the South Orange Avenue address? Your Honor, he has a victim. All righty. 
Who's in the box? Sharnate Divine. All right, raise your right hand, please. You saw me swear the testimony out to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. Yes, sir. All right, ma'am. Tell me, uh, you are the alleged victim in this case. Is that right? Yes. And uh, do you uh, object to him being allowed to come home, or is that what you wish? No, he can He can come home. I'm going to um, be the one leaving, so I, I don't mind him coming back. When are you going to be, when are you going to be vacating the address? Um, within the next three or four hours. Okay, so by the time he gets out, um, you won't be there anymore? No, sir. All right. Yes. And do you want to have, do you, hold on. Do you want him to be able to have any contact with you or do you want me to order him to have no contact or no hostile contact or what, what, what is your pleasure as to that? No hostile contact. All right. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to uh, set bond the amount of $500, Mr. Mahoney. You'll be allowed to go back to the home, assuming that um, that the alleged victim is gone, assuming that she's gone, okay? Um, you can't go there if she, doesn't, if she doesn't leave, all right? Yeah, I understand. Uh, and you're not to have any hostile contact with her, meaning you can't raise your voice, you can't throw anything at her, you can't do anything hostile at all to her, or else that'll be a violation of your bond. You understand that? Yes, sir. I have a question, All right. um, Judge. Sure. Will he yep. be? Uh, will he qualify for the um, the release thing to where he don't have to bond out because he was going through a kind of struggle right now? Um, I, the paperwork I have says no, but it also says that he wasn't interviewed. Um, yeah. What just what is what is pretrial release? Has there been a change, an update, maybe that he does qualify now? Uh, he may qualify, but he needs to be interviewed. Okay. What I'll do is I'll set the bond at five hundred dollars or pretrial release. So they're going to talk to you if you do qualify. I don't have any problem with you being released on those conditions. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah. And no drugs. Oh, jeez. All right, your name, sir? Edwin Maldonado. Okay. I'm Mr. Maldonado. You're here today because you're arrested on charge of battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause um, on that case. Do you have another place to go other than Shepherd Lake? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Okay. Um, all right, I'll set bond on the violation of probation in the amount of $500. You're not to return to um, the 308 Shepherd Lake Court. You're not to have any contact with uh, Luce Maldonado. Is that her last name? Is that correct? Yes. Um, no contact at all at this point in time. And um, no guns, no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons. And then you're also, uh, we're also arrested on a batter, on a, excuse me, on a violation of probation out of Polk County, and there's no bond on that. We will contact Polk County because there's no transportation happening now, but we'll contact Polk County and see if they are willing to set a bond or, or in some way, uh, other alternative release uh, strategy. And so uh, when that happens, once we've made contact with Polk County, they'll bring you back so we can let you know what's happening on that. Okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah, right. All right, thank you. Your name, sir? Rafael Myrie. Mr. Myrie, you're here today because you were arrested on charge of battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find there's sufficient probable cause. Um, do you have another place to go other than the Stone Bark Trail address? The victim is here, Your Honor. All righty. Who's in the box? Wanda Laura. Uh, Miss Laura, raise your right hand, please. You saw me swear the testimony out to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes. All right. Uh, tell me what you what you want me to know about this. Do you have any fear of him coming home? Yes. You do. Okay. Um, so you want him to have to go somewhere else? Is that is that what I'm hearing you say? Until I until I can get out. Yes. Okay. Are you in the process of moving or what's, what's the yes, procedure? Yes, I'm, I'm in the process of moving. Okay. All right. Well, then what I'll, my, uh, I think the best thing to do is just order that he not return to that address 
on the short term. Uh, and does, uh, are you asking for no con no contact or no hostile contact, or what are you asking for? No contact. All right, we can do that. Um, and then once, if you're out of the place, then, then I won't have any uh, objection to him moving back in there, but that'll have to change at some point. Uh, all right, so Mr. Lohr, uh, excuse me, Mr. Myrie, I will set bond amount of $500. Um, you're not to return to the Stone Bark Trail address on the short term. It might, once she's moved out of the place, I'm sure the judge, uh, the trial judge will be uh, willing to modify that. Um, no guns, no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons, and you're not to have any contact at all with Juan Delora uh, at this point. Same thing, if she changes her mind on that and she wishes to have contact with you at some point, um, the, uh, the TV judge can always modify that, okay? Yeah. And I'll point a poker yeah. finish. Yep. He does qualify for PTR. Oh, he does? Yes, sir. Oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. I'll release you with pretrial release conditions. So there won't be a bond. Everything else is there. Everything else I said can, is, is um, in place, but there won't be a $500 bond. It'll just be pretrial release conditions. Okay? What yeah, and one, you, oh, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Laura, for right now, you can, uh, Mr. Myrie, excuse me, you can go back to that address one time with law enforcement to get your stuff. Okay, if it turns out when you go back to get your stuff, she, Miss um, Laura has moved out, then let your attorney know and they can ask the judge to allow you to just move back in. Okay? Would I be notified right. when he's coming? Um, yes, well, law enforcement will be with him. So, and I, if you're going to be out in the next day or so, it's, it probably won't occur before then, for sure. Usually it takes a little while for them to get that set up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But, but, but he's not to be there without law enforcement. So if he does, then you call law enforcement because he's a, if he comes to get his stuff, it's only with, with, a, with someone from law enforcement. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Your name, sir? Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. I didn't see what time it was. That's afternoon. Uh, afternoon. <laughs> your, what's your name? Eric Rule. Mr. Roll, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of battery domestic violence. I have read the charging affidavit, and I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. Uh, do we have anyone here for this case? No? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, do you have another place to go other than Lake that Lake Destiny Road uh, address? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, where are you going to go? Oh, I'm sorry. It's 1231 Merritt, out to right. Springs. Okay. You do qualify for pretrial release, so I'll release you with pretrial release conditions. Um, no guns, no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons. You're not to have any contact at this point in time uh, with uh, Prashana Latri or La McClary. Latrice McClary. Yeah. You're not to have any contact with her at all. You're allowed to return to the Lake Destiny address one time with law enforcement to pick up some of your personal items. Okay? Excuse, oh, excuse me, sir. Yep. That is yep. a ho that's a hotel. Okay. Well, if you can go there still with law enforcement, yeah. if it turns out your stuff is probably either in storage or gone, but you can give it a try, but you still need to take law enforcement with you when you go. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All righty. Your name, sir? Alejandro Blow, sir. What happened to Joseph Alvarez? On it, out. All right, Mr. Um, Mr. Blowy, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of, uh, excuse me, as a warrant for a sexual offender failing to report and re-register. Yes, sir. All right, I will set bond the amount of $500 on that and require that you, uh, as a condition of your bond, that you uh, register, uh, show proof of registration within 48 hours. Well, that's not going to work today, will it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, within 48 hours of your release, okay, if you bond out, you need to, re re to register again as a condition of your bond. Okay? Yes, sir. All righty. Good luck. Point of public defender to represent you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Your name, sir? Daniel Bryant. Mr. Bryant, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of drug paraphernalia and destruction of evidence. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find there's sufficient probable cause. I'll set bond the amount of uh, $750 on the destruction of evidence and $100 on the drug paraphernalia. I'll take no action on the uh, possession of controlled substance that you're already on bond on, so that, that bond will stay in place. And I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. All right, sir, thank you. You're all set. Your name, sir? George Caban. 
All right, Mr. Caban, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. I've read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. Um, I will set bond the amount of uh, $500 on the possession of cocaine, $100 on the possession of drug paraphernalia, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Thank you. Yeah, five. You know what? I'll say reduce instead of just saying the number. That'll be that'll be make it easier for you too. I know, no, I know. And, and it's going pretty fast too. Uh, your name, sir? Charles Conklin. All right, Mr. Conklin, you're here for a number of things. First of all, you were arrested on a charge of battery of uh, excuse me, burglary of a dwelling, criminal mischief. Aggravated assault, criminal mischief, and uh, there was a uh, violation of probation warrant out of Lake County. On the burglary of a dwelling, criminal mischief, and aggravated assault. Hello. Yes. Hmm? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm still in the same spot. I'm about halfway through. Um, I'll wait here in this courtroom for you to, to bring it, to bring another one back if you want to do it that way, or just want to send it through. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, Mr. Conklin, uh, back to your case. So he had a burglary, dwelling, criminal mischief, aggravated assault, and criminal mischief. I have read the charging affidavits on that, and I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. On the uh, burglary of a dwelling, the bond's $5,000. The criminal mischief is, oh, I'm going to reduce to $100. The aggravated assault is $2,500, and I'll reduce the additional criminal mischief also to $100. On the uh, Lake County violation of probation warrant, there is no bond on that. Um, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you on all of those matters. Now, on that, uh, on that warrant out of Lake County, we will be contacting Lake County to see if they wish to reduce that bond or set a bond uh, or some additional um, condition of release. And so we'll bring you back once we hear from Lake County to let you know what their, what their decision on that was. Okay? There are other bonds that will be in place. Thank you. Yes, sir. Your name, sir? Eric English. All right, Mr. English, you're here today because uh, you're arrested on several charges. First of all, possession of cocaine within a thousand feet of a uh, uh, convenience store, possession of cocaine, and possession of cannabis. Um, I already got it. Um, you're, uh, I did find sufficient probable cause for the possession of cocaine. Um, I don't find probable cause for the possession of cocaine within a thousand feet, and I don't think it's going to make a difference because it's a traffic stop. So they stopped them right in front of the convenience store. So I think there's a pro that's a bit problematic as far as, I mean, yes, technically, I guess it was within 1,000 feet, but I don't think that that was willful. So um, as to the possession of cocaine, um, we'll set bond of $1,000, $100 on the possession of cannabis, and I'm going to ROR them on the possession within 1,000 feet. Yeah. Can you give us 24 hours on count one? Um, no, because it does. It's just not going to matter. I mean, they were driving along, and they, it was a traffic stop. So I, I don't think it's not going to change the situation. Um, but it's a thousand and, and one hundred. Okay, and then I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. All right. I mean, otherwise, I could just wait and just pull everyone over. Right. So. Your name, ma'am? Tabitha Fennell. Excuse me, Judge. All right. This yep. trial. It was an update. She does qualify for PTR. She does. Okay. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Um, you were arrested on charge of fleeing and attempting to elude. Uh, I have read the charging affidavit. Do you find sufficient probable cause? This is one of the situations where if it if it if it was how it read, you're never going to win that. Okay. You know when they try to pull you over, you got to pull over. Okay. I do um, find sufficient probable cause. You do qualify for for pretrial release, so I will release you uh, on uh, PTR conditions. So that means there won't be a bond required. It's just the things you have to live up to. All right. Okay. No guns, no weapons, no drugs, no alcohol, and no driving without a valid Florida driver's license. Okay? okay. I'll point a public defender to represent you. Your name, sir? Gonzalez Roy. All right, sir, you're here today because uh, you're arrested on a charge of petty theft and uttering a forged check, uh, forged check, excuse me, 
I have read the charging affidavit. I do find the sufficient probable cause. Set so bond amount of one thousand dollars on the uttering of Ford check. Forge check one hundred dollars on the petty theft, and I'll point a public defender to represent you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I have three other counts. Is it? Four other counts. Hold on a second. It says add on. So I might have already been IA'd on the other stuff. Yeah, because they don't. Correction. Correction. Are there four other counts, or was he already IA'd on those other four, and this was just an add on? I have, um, hold on, Judge. My he can't, it had them coming in on 522 on yesterday? Yes. This charging affidavit is dated uh, 522, and at the top it does say add on. Hold on one second, Judge. Mm -hmm. It does look like on the on your on the paperwork, the face sheet, it shows two different case numbers, 6341 and 6234. And 6341 is this case and 6234 is. Okay, Judge, he did go to court on those um, on 522. On the on these cases? Yes, sir. On the uh, 2020 CF006234. Yeah, okay, so but we're here on 6341, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so those are those are additional charges. Okay, thank you. All right, you're all set, yeah. Your name, sir? How you doing? Hello, what's your name? Willie Hill. Mr. Hill, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of tampering with physical evidence and possession of drug paraphernalia. Yes, uh, I, do find, I do find sufficient probable cause. I'm going to reduce the bond on the tampering to $250 and the possession of drug paraphernalia to $100, and I will appoint a public defender to represent you. Your name, sir? Dwayne Johnson. All right, Mr. Johnson, you're here today because you're arrested on a few things. First of all, there was a uh, felony, a warrant for failing to appear out, out of Orange County on a driving while license suspended. There is no bond on that. But that was on just a, like a signature bond or something. All right, don't sign out to that. I suppose just came back on another day and fell out a piece of paper, but I had no cop. Well, didn't. that's one thing, but they also have a warrant from a 2018 driving while license suspended, you failed to appear for a plea on December 11th of 2018, allegedly. But that, that was the same case. I went to court for it, but I just came back no. and signed a piece of paper. That was it. No. Well, you got two things. The other thing is a writ, a writ where... Um, on the, I'll get back to the other one. On the writ, you're to return... The writ? You're going to be released ROR on this writ, and then is there, is there a date? Oh, here we go. Uh, July 6th at 10.30 a.m., all right? So on the writ, which is for from a domestic case for contempt of court, you have to return on July 6th, okay? On the... Okay. Oh, uh, and al and also because of the uh, the whole pandemic, there will it will be a phone hearing, and the paperwork you get will have the phone number for you to call on July six at ten thirty, to for that hearing. Okay, so you're being released on that, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to set a bond on the driving license suspended case, uh, in the amount of uh, five hundred dollars. Okay, so it was no bond warrant. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually set a bond on it. It's an Orange County bond. I can do it. Okay. Okay. And appoint a public defender on that as well. And I, I assume that you probably can't get your license back because of that of that case right there. The other contempt. If you get your license back, that other one might go away. So you might want to work on that. All right. Thank you. All right. That was Orange County, right? Did I say the bond? Uh oh. 2018 wasn't even hers. I know. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be Ginger. He gets mad too. Miller. Come on, we're gonna work. And obviously he hasn't gotten arrested. All right, your name, ma'am? 
Uniquea Jones. All right, Ms. Jones, you're here for uh, several things. First of all, you're here because you were arrested on charge of driving while license suspended. Uh, uh, while your license was either suspended, revoked, or as an habitual traffic offender, have uh, do find sufficient probable cause on that. It's up on the amount of twenty five hundred dollars, and then also you had a charge of fleeing into an attempting um, to elude or give excuse me false inf false information. Okay. Yes. Uh, false information. Yeah. Um, I do find sufficient probable cause. Set on the amount of five hundred dollars. You are currently out on bond on a. Um, a burglary case and a trespass. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave those bonds in place. I'll take no action okay, on those. You. All right. So All right. Um, I'm able to pay my bond. Yep. All right. Thank you. Your name, sir? Jalen Lewis. All right, Mr. Lewis, you're here uh, for a number of things. First of all, you were arrested on a uh, actually to say. From a arrest warrant, count one being robbery with a firearm, count two aggravated assault with a firearm, count three grand theft third degree and criminal mischief. In those cases, there's a bond of five thousand dollars on the ag assault, two thousand dollars on the grand theft, and five hundred dollars on the criminal mischief. And there's no bond on the on the robbery with the firearm. I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Yeah, state everything. Your name, sir? Lacar Miller. All right, sir. What happened to Jeffrey Martin Martinez? Is he bond? He bonded, John. All right. All right, Mr. Miller, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of introduction of contraband into a county detention facility, possession of cannabis, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I have read the charging affidavit, and I do find there's sufficient probable cause. And there, in addition, there was a misdemeanor case of possession of drug paraphernalia and possession of cannabis, trespass, and a conveyance. There's probable cause on those. As to um, the introduction of contraband, I set bond the amount of $1,000 in the possession of cannabis and possession of drug paraphernalia that are companions with that charge. I was set at bonds of $100. And then on the possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of cannabis, and the uh, possession, of, or excuse me, trespass and conveyance. Set bond the amount of five hundred dollars on the paraphernalia, one hundred dollars on the two additional counts. We'll stay those bonds. I'll appoint a public defender to represent represent you on both cases. Thank you. Your name, sir? Caleb Milligan. Mr. Milligan, you're here today because you were arrested on charge of aggravated assault with a weapon, petty theft, and defrauding a merchant. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. I'll set bond the amount of twenty five hundred dollars. On the aggravated assault, uh, $100 on the petty theft and $100 on the farting an innkeeper. You're currently out on a trespass uh, other than a structure or ROR on that. Um, I will take no action on that. I'll leave that ROR in place. Thank you. That's one of my kids. I noticed. Your name, sir? Jose Antonio Perez. All right, Mr. Perez, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of uh, resisting an officer um, uh, and flee or fleeing, attempting to elude. Um, I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. I'll set bond the amount of $2,500 on the fleeing, attempting to elude. Uh, set bond of 1,000, I reduce the bond to $1,000 on the resisting officer without violence. You're also out on a um, Driving while under the influence charge from Osceola County. What do they want me to do? Yeah, yeah I, I if it was Orange County, I probably would. But I'll 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 um I'll take no action on that because it's not our bond. But um, so that that bond will stay in place. Judge, yeah, excuse me. Do you have two yep. uh, cases? I just found the other one. Okay. Thank you. You're right. Um. In addition, we have a driving under the influence charge, a uh, violation of driver license restriction, a second DUI charge, and a moving um, a driving while license suspended. And do you find sufficient probable cause on those as well? Hmm. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
There's $500 a piece. No operation of any motor vehicle if you do bond out. No drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Point you. of public defender. My face is going to be on TV. Your name, sir? Jose Luis Polanco Mercado. All right, sir, you're here today because uh, you're arrested on a charge of uh, are these charges, possession of cocaine uh, with intent to sell or deliver, possession of alprazolam, possession of cannabis, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I have reviewed, um, actually, this was on an arrest warrant. I reviewed the affidavit. Bonds are set as follows. In the possession of, with intent, Bond is set at ten thousand dollars. Possession of a prazolam one fifty. Possession of cannabis one or one hundred. And possession of drug paraphernalia one hundred. Point of public defender to represent you. What was that? I'll point a public defender to represent you on all those charges. Okay. Dump a court. I mean, you had a chance to put correction. Do oh wait, have? I don't. I didn't have. This is the last guy now. We have to come back. Uh, yeah, I have, yeah. Said the podium. All righty, thank you. Can you ask cor correction according to the face sheet, Jeff? Yeah, we have on the face sheet that there's a contempt. I'm, I'm looking. But I don't have any. I'm looking for you, Judge, to see. Okay, thanks. Hold on one second. Yes, it's on here. Mm. All right, Mr. Um, Paolo Manco Mercado, you do have a, uh, a civil contempt from a 2017 case. I'm going to release you on that, and your case will be set for a hearing on July the 6th at 11 a.m., now, that hearing will be by telephone, so the paperwork you get is going to give you the court date, and then it's also going to have, there's an additional order that uh, has it set for a phone hearing, and the telephone number is in that order, okay? okay? So that's the order that you'll call, and it tells you how to do it. There's a code you put in after you've called in, and then you'll be in on that hearing as well, okay? All right. So if you bond out, that, that's what you're going to make sure you need to do is to call on July 6th. So Alrighty. you accepted the bond? Yeah, the bonds. I, I I said all the bonds that are that were there. I, I stayed those. So you have bonds, and then that that case you're going to be released on though the civil case. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. all right. Good luck. It. And that's R O R Judge. That, that Michael Rivera. Judge, and that civil case is that R O R? That's how you release uh, him. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, thank Michael you. Rivera bonded, John. Michael Rivera bonded. Okay. Your name, ma'am? Deborah Rogers. Ms. Rogers, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of a charges of possession of methamphetamine, possession of cocaine, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. Do you find sufficient probable cause? Uh, bond will be stayed at $1,000 on the methamphetamine, $150 on the cocaine, and $100 on the drug paraphernalia. Now, you are out on bond on another possession of methamphetamine, possession of drug paraphernalia, Driving license suspended, trafficking in fentanyl, possession of controlled substance, possession of method, uh, methadone, possession of cocaine, possession of cocaine with intent, and possession of fentanyl. A driving while license suspended, and a possession, another possession of fentanyl. On the uh, first one that I read, all of those cases off, I'm going to revoke that, those bonds and uh, set no bonds. As to the driving while suspended, I'll take no action. And on the possession of fentanyl, possession of methamphetamine, I'll revoke that and set no bond. Judge, this pre this pretrial, on the uh, case, um, the CT, the 2020 CT 002950, you, are you um, re revoking it or? No action. No action. Okay, now. That's on the drive on suspended case? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, and, no action. And then on the 2020 CF 004242AO, she only has three charges, which is the uh, possession of fentanyl, possession of meth, and a driving while license suspended. All the other charges was no action taken. He revoked both of those bonds, both of those cases. So yeah. Because he revoked them at Saturday at night. Yeah. Okay, even though it's three charges? For that set. Which, which case are we talking about? 2020 CF 004242AO. Okay, I, 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 it may be three. 
I have nine, but if it was only three, then I'll revoke it on the three. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll appoint a public defender to represent you on those cases. Your name, ma'am? Elena Ruckman. All right. Here we go. All right. Ms. Ruckman, you're here today because you're arresting a charge of battery and a law enforcement officer. Yes, sir. Um, I uh, did read the charging affidavit. Do you find sufficient public cause? I'm going to reduce the bond in this case to $750 <laughs> and appoint a public defender to represent you. She qualifies for PTR. Please. Oh, wait. You qualify. All right. I, I, I missed it. I didn't see my highlight. My highlighter was running out of ink, I guess. I didn't see it. Um, I'll, I'll release a pretrial release conditions. Oh, thank okay. So there's no bond required, but you do have to live up to the conditions of pretrial release, <laughs> not to have any drugs or alcohol or guns or weapons. Okay. And thank I'll appoint you. a public defender to represent you. No, All righty. No problem with that. <laughs> yes, Your name, sir? Roberto Silva. All right, Mr. Silva, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of cocaine. And I've read the charging affidavit. Do you find sufficient probable cause on that? It's a bond amount of $1,000. You're also arrested on a charge of driving while license, or excuse me, no valid driver's license. I do find sufficient probable cause. It's a bond of in one, as the amount of $100. And... What on these other ones? Um, I'll take uh, no action on the tampering with physical evidence, attaching a tag. Just no, I'll just no, no action on the other stuff. Just make it easier. All right, so the other bonds will stay in place. Okay. Your name, sir? Charles Smith. All right, Mr. Smith, you're here today because State of Florida alleges that you are, um, or excuse me, because you're arrested on a charge of possession of controlled substance. Um, um, Madam Public Defender. Yeah, it just says the pills engraved with B7 and and six on the other end, a check on the pill identified revealed the pill to be a Schedule Four controlled substance. Doesn't say what it is. State. Still would ask twenty-four hours, Your Honor. All right. What I'll do is I'll set. I'm gonna. The bond is a thousand dollars, but I'm gonna give the state twenty-four hours. I, I find that there's no there's no PC at this point in time to establish that it's a controlled substance. So the state will have twenty-four hours to get some additional information uh, or additional affidavit. If they do that, we'll we'll bring you back tomorrow, one way or the other. Okay. Unless you bond out. If you decide to bond out on the thousand dollars, just hold on. Let me finish. You can bond out if you wish. Because it's, I'll leave it at a thousand dollars. I'll stay it for right now. But we're going to also, if you don't bond out, we'll bring you back tomorrow. If the state has not established that there was a re, that there's a probable cause that there was a, a, a controlled substance, then you'll be released tomorrow without a bond. Okay. Okay. Now they still could go forward on the charge, but that'll that'll decide whether or not you stay. Okay. So that's going to be up to you. So either I'll see you tomorrow or you'll bond out today. Okay. Okay. All right. Your name, sir? Fernando Cortez Taylor. All right, Mr. Taylor, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of MDMA. Um, I do find sufficient probable cause set bond the amount of $1,000. Um, I'll take no action on the Oslo County uh, bond, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Your name, sir? Douglas Thomas. All right, Mr. Thomas, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of MDMA. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause to set bond the amount of $1,000 and will appoint a public defender to represent you. Your name, sir? David Vaught. Mr. Vaught, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find sufficient probable cause on that. I will uh, set bond about $1,000 on the possession of cocaine and $100 on the possession of drug paraphernalia. 
Uh, I'll take no action on the uh, other bond that you're currently in, uh, out on. Okay. That'll stay in place. So. Your name, ma'am? Amanda Waldron. Ms. Waldron, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find a uh, red charge affidavit. Yes. I do find sufficient uh, probable cause set on the matter $1,000 on the cocaine, $100 on the possession of drug paraphernalia. So I appoint a public defender to represent you. She qualifies for PTR. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, that was, that's a change. Um, all right. You do qualify for uh, pretrial uh, release. I'm going to release you pretrial release with uh, those conditions. So there won't be a bond required, but you do have to live up to the rules of the pretrial release program. Okay. Yes, sir. No drugs, no, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, and uh, no guns. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Your name, sir? Kenny Young. What happened to Ivory Williams? On to Dow. All right, Mr. Young. Yes, sir. Uh, you were arrested on a charge of burglary of an unoccupied dwelling and criminal mischief. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find that there's sufficient probable cause to set bond. Uh, reduce the bond on the uh, unoccupied dwelling uh, to two thousand dollars, and the criminal mischief to at least, I'll stay that at five hundred dollars, uh, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. Sir, yep. uh -huh. sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Your name, ma'am? Tarnesia Flukers. Uh, all right, ma'am, you're here today because you're arrested on, well, where is it? A charge of driving while license suspended. Oh, it's out of county. It's a warrant from, from that's why there's no paperwork. Uh, I thought I should have something. Yeah. This is all I got right here. What are the bonds on? Is it so there's a Lake County and Seminole County home? Oh, it just has our thing, yeah. Let me see. It probably got separated. Hang on. Here it is. I found it. It's under Moultrie. Okay. <coughs> there we go. All right, Ms. Flukers. You're arrested on a charge of uh, driving while license suspended. Uh, I do find uh, as a I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. A set bond in the amount of um, five hundred dollars. Actually, I'm going to reduce that to two fifty. All right, and appoint a public defender to represent you. <clears throat> what does that mean? I mean, you got bond out. You're bond two fifty. Two fifty. Yep. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. What about the Lake yep. County? I don't. I don't have any paperwork on that. Do you guys have anything on that oh. at the jail? Oh, let me look for you, Judge. Lake County, she has no bond, and on the uh, Seminole County, she has a fifteen hundred dollar bond. All right. So on Seminole County, you have a fifteen hundred dollar bond. The Lake County has no bond. Now we will be contacting Lake County and some. No, nope, it's already been done. No, we don't have nothing. Okay. Yeah, we don't we don't have that paperwork. So, have they served that on you? Did you get something served on you about that? No, sir. All right. So they may not have served you on that. If they do, they'll bring you back. But once that happens, if they do serve you, when they bring you back, we will contact Lake County and Seminole County to see if they uh, would like to set a different bond or in your, on the one case where there's no bond, a, a bond of any amount. Um, and then we'll bring you back and let you know what happened on that. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. I need someone to keep me straight. Your name, sir? Uh, James Moultrie. Mr. Moultrie, you're here today because uh, you were arrested on a charge of driving with license suspended. I do find sufficient probable cause to step on it. Uh, uh, oh, actually, he, he, uh, you do qualify for pretrial release. Yes, so sir. I'll release, you, oh, okay. I'll release you with PTR conditions. Yeah. 
Okay. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. So there won't be any bond, but you have to live up to the conditions of that program. Mm -hmm. And uh, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. Don't drive without a valid driver's license. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. I appoint a public defender to represent you also. All right. Thank you, sir. Your name, sir? Jose Enrique Falou Mendoza. Okay. I have. What about Vincent Benitez Perez? He wasn't on our list, Your Honor. We have an inmate number. Two zero zero one two zero seven one. He's bonded. Bonded he is. All right. And Christopher Clements? Uh, he's mental health, John. He was, he was what? He's mental health. Mental health, thank you. Reset that one. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fallo Mendoza, correct? Yes, sir. All right, sir. You're here today because you're arrested on a charge of petty theft. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause to set bond the amount of $500. I will uh, um, take no action on your, uh, the bond that you're out on. You're out of, on, on a battery charge. I will take no action on that. And uh, I'll appoint a public defender to represent you. I have a plea thing here. I wanted to know oh. if it's possible for me to. Is that one? Is that one? Does he have an offer? Enter the plea. Your Honor, the offer would be adjudication of guilt, court costs, and time, credit for time served. Okay. So there, the offer is an adjudication. So be convicted and credit for time served and court costs. Is that what you wish to do? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? No, Your Honor. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No, Your Honor. It's read over that plea form you're holding, understand all the rights, and then sign it on the bottom. Yes, Your Honor. They all right. Go ahead and sign it now. She'll show you where to sign it. Your Honor, they do oral pleas. They don't sign the plea forms. They do okay. oral pleas. All right. You understand all the rights on that form then? Yes? Fine. Yes, Your Honor. Rights. All right. You under, and you understand this is punishable by up to 60 days in jail, up to a $500 fine, and that the entry of your plea could result in deportation if you're not a citizen? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Do you find sufficient factual basis to accept your plea? I'll judge you guilty of the charge of petty theft. Be sentenced to the time you've served in the Orange County Jail. I'll impose court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution to the state. That's a total of $273. Um, did you want to pay that in 90 days or would you want to pay that in 180 days or would you like a payment plan of $30 a month? I'd like a payment plan of $30 a month. First payment will be due by the 17th of August and every 30 days or after until it's paid in full. Okay. And if we release that to this case, you're still on bond on the battery case. So make sure you make all those court dates. Uh, sir, on the battery case, yep. uh, it was yep. supposed to be a ROR. I don't know if they revoked right that. Right now, whatever you have is you, that that release condition is staying there. So you, they're not going to hold you on that. I didn't change that. Also, I'm still ROR on the battery. Um, if that's what you, yeah, it looks like you were ROR before. I'm not changing it. So okay, thank you, you very much. They're not holding you on that case. Uh, they, we just need fingerprints. Need fingerprints from. Thank you. All right. Are there, are there other ones that want to plea, or if you know that they want to plea, just you know, stop me. I have offers prepared for all the misdemeanor pleadables. Okay, all right. Um, your name, sir? Monday Gray. Mr. Gray, you're here today because you're arrested on a trespass on property after warning. I do find sufficient probable cause. I would set bond the amount of five hundred dollars, but the state has an offer. Are you interested in pleading to your case today? Yes, sir. What is the offer? The offer would be an adjudication of guilt, court costs, and credit for time served. All right. If you wish to enter a plea of no contest to this today, it would be an adjudication of guilt or a conviction. It would be the time that you've served and court costs. Yes, sir. Do you want to do that? Yes, sir. Is that what you wish to do? All right. So you wish to enter a plea of no contest. Is that correct? Yes? Yeah, no I want contest? To plead. Yeah, I want to plead guilty. All right. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? No, sir. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No, sir. Plea form you have there, did you read over that and understand all the rights on that form? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about any of those rights? No, sir. You understand that this is punishable by up to 60 days in jail, up to a $500 fine, and that the entry of your plea would result in deportation if you're not a citizen? Yes, sir. 
All right, I do find sufficient factual basis to accept your plea. I'll judge you guilty of that. You sense the time you've served in the Orange County Jail on post court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution. It's a total of $273. Would you like to pay that in 180 days, or would you like a payment plan of $30 a month? 180 days. All right, pay within 180 days, and your paperwork you get when you're released will tell you how to do that. All right, good luck. Your name, sir? Oh, Zachary Hilton. What happened? Is Mr. Hayden uh, mental health? Huh? Yes, Your Honor. Look at that. Good predicted stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, reset him. All righty. Okay, Mr. Hilton, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of trespassing conveyance and possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, I do find sufficient probable cause uh, on those. I could set a bond, or are you interested in um, pleading your case and resolving it? Uh, yes, sir. All right, State, have an offer? Yes, Your Honor. As to count one, the trespass to the conveyance, uh, the offer would be a withhold of adjudication, four months of supervised probation with the cognitive behavioral change class, um, court costs and credit for time served, and then no pros, uh, count two, possession of drug paraphernalia. All right, so if you wish to enter a plea today, um, the recommendation would be a withhold of adjudication, meaning no conviction, and be four months of supervised probation with the special condition that you complete the cognitive, cognitive behavioral class um, within that four months, and then core costs. That's the only plea? That, do you want to do that? What about for the other charge? The other charge will be dropped. Okay, yeah, MF, I'll do that. Fuck okay. it. You want to do all right? So, an enter plea of no contest into the charge of trespass. Is that right? Yo. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol no. today? No. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No. That plea form that you have there, did you read over that, understand all the rights, and then sign it on the bottom? Y yes, but I never signed it yet. All right, but yeah, yeah, that's right. You're not signing them today. That's right. But you understood all the rights? Yes. Any questions about anything on that form? No. You understand that this is punishable by up to 60 days in jail, up to a $500 fine, and that the entry of your plea would result in deportation if you're not a citizen? Yes. All right. I do find sufficient factual basis. I'll withhold adjudication. Since the time served, um, I'll Im impose four months of supervised probation, and that time served will be a special condition of that. Um, additional special condition and requirement that you complete the CBC or cognitive behavioral class. I want you to sign up for that uh, within uh, 60 days and complete that within 90 days. There will be court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution. Um, did you want to pay that in, uh, in 90 days or would you like a payment plan? Uh, 90 days. All right. Pay that within 90 days as well. Uh, report to probation within 48 hours of your release from incarceration. You, will be rele you should be released today. Okay, so actually report by Tuesday at uh, 4 o'clock. Okay. That would be easier. Okay, thank you. Count two, no pros. State have an announcement as the count two? State would announce no pros on count two. I know. Uh, all right, your name, sir? All right, Mr. Hemphill, you're here today because you're arrested on uh, two charges, trespass uh, on pro or entry on property unlawfully. Uh, looks like two counts of that. There two. Oh, so it's two different two different dates. Um, are you guys representing him now? Hmm. Well, what do you suggest? I think, Your Honor, if he's been adjudicated and competent in other cases, there's a question as to whether or not he's competent in this case. Yeah. So should I just ROR him? And... I would not object. All right. All right. Mr. Hempel, I'm going to ROR you on these cases and I'll stay the bonds or on the other stuff. It looks like you're actually out without bonds, anyways. Oh, oh there's one where there's a bond. Um, and I'll appoint a public defender to represent you on this case as well. Okay? Yes, sir. So you took no action, Judge, on his. Uh, yeah, no action on the other ones. Okay. 
Your name, sir? Martinez Mercado Jose. What happened to Mr. Lockhart? He the hospital, Your Honor. Uh, all right, hospital reset him, medical. Uh, Mr. LaFaro, is that right? No, LaFaro is nope. not on health, Your Honor. What happened with Mr. LaFaro? Not on health, Your Honor. Mental health, thank you. All right. Marti Mr. Martinez Mercado. Yeah. All right. Okay. You're here uh, because you're arrested on charge of possession of drug paraphernalia? Yeah. Guilty. <laughs> um, I'm guilty. All right. Do, you, did, do we have an offer in the case? There, the, 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 the assistant public defender does have a challenge as to um, uh, the probable cause, and I, I agree this is one that had it. just says that it's a needle. It, does not, it wasn't tested positive. It could be used for other things. But it sounds like he... May agree that it's paraphernalia. Does it, do you have a, an offer? The offer would be withhold court costs and credit for time served. All right. The offer from the state, if you want to resolve it today, is a withhold of adjudication, meaning no conviction, and uh, time served and court costs. Okay. Do you want that? Yeah. All right. So you want to enter a plea of no contest. Is that right? All right. No are contest. Of, no contest. All right, are you under the, all right. Okay. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? No. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No. All right. Did you read over a plea form and understand the rights on that form? No. That form they gave you? Did you read all the, all yeah. the rights on there? And you understood all those rights? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any, do you have any questions about no, any of sir. those rights? No, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. You understand that this is punishable by a maximum of a year in the county jail up to a $1,000 fine and that the entry of your plea would result in deportation if you're not a citizen. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, I do find sufficient factual basis to accept your plea. I'll uh, withhold adjudication, send you the time served, and court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution. That's a total of $273. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, did you want to have a payment plan on that, or do you want to pay that in 180 days? 180 days. All right, pay within 180 days it is. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. All righty. <laughs> Your name, sir? Kenneth Miller. Mr. Miller, you're here today because you're arrested on charge of possession of uh, drug paraphernalia. Yes, sir. Um, I do find sufficient probable cause. I can set a bond or the state may have an offer. Are you interested in um, possibly pleading the case today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh, I... All right, what's the offer, state? The offer, Your Honor, would be adjudication of guilt, court costs, and credit for time served. Yes, All right, sir. if you wish to enter, enter a plea of guilty or no contest, they're going to recommend that you be a judge guilty and that you be sentenced to time served and court costs. Is that what you wish to do? Yes, sir. All right. Are you, uh, so you're going to enter a plea of no contest. Is that correct? Right. Correct. All right. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? No, sir. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No. Uh, they gave you a plea form. Did you understand all the rights on that? Yes, uh, when you, uh, and do you have any questions about those rights? No, I don't. All right, you understand that's punishable by up to a year in the county jail, up to a thousand dollar fine, and that the entry of your plea yeah. would result in deportation if you're not a citizen. Yes, sir, I do. All right, I do find sufficient factual basis to accept your plea. I will mm -hmm. judge you guilty of that offense. You'll be sentenced to the time that you have served. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll impose court costs and a fifty dollar cost of prosecution. That's a total of two hundred and seventy three dollars. Would you like to pay that in uh, one hundred and eighty days, or would you like a payment plan? A uh, payment plan, no man. All right. Can you afford $20 a month? Yes, sir. First payment due by the 17th of August mm -hmm. and every 30 days or after until it's paid in full. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Good luck. Uh, uh, Your name, sir? Uh, Stoddard. Anthony Stoddard. All right, Mr. Stoddard, you're here today because you're arrested on a charge of uh, petty theft. I have read the charging affidavit. I do find sufficient probable cause. I can set a bond, or if you wish, I can ask the state if they have an offer in your case if you want to plead out. What do you want to do? I'd like the offer. All right, state. Your Honor, the offer would be an adjudication of guilt, four months of supervised probation with the impulse control class, court costs, and credit of time for time served. All right, so if you wish to enter a plea, um, say a withhold. Adjudication. Adjudication of guilt, um, four months of supervised probation, and uh, a requirement that you do an impulse control class, which I think is an eight-hour class. Uh, and then uh, and that would be, be released today. Um, or I can set a bond amount of $250, and then you can see where it goes from there. 
No, I'll take the plea. All right. Are you under? The, you want to enter a plea of no contest then? Is that right? Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? No. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No. They gave you a plea form. Did you read over that and understand all the rights on it? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about any of the rights on that form, front or back? No. You understand that this is punishable by up to 60 days in jail, up to a $500 fine, and that the entry of your plea would result in deportation if you're not a citizen? Yes. All right. I do find sufficient factual basis to accept your plea. I will judge you guilty. Be sentenced to time served, uh, which will be a special condition of four months of supervised probation. Additional special condition will be a requirement that you attend to complete an impulse control class. I show that completion within 90 days. I will impose court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution uh, to the state. It's a total of $273. Did you want to pay that in 90 days, or would you like a payment plan? 90 days. I pay that within 90 days as well. You'll be released as to this case. Report to probation by Tuesday at 4. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right, good luck. We got time. I'm on. Your name, sir? Henry L. Wright. Mr. Wright, you're here today because the state of Florida alleges that, or not, they alleges that you uh, were arrested on a charge of possession of drug paraphernalia. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and you find sufficient probable cause. I can set bond in an amount of $100, or if you wish to, the state could make an offer if you want to try to resolve this case today. Resolve this case today. All right, state, what's the offer? The offer is an adjudication of guilt, court costs, and credit for time served. All right, so if you want to enter a plea of no contest, it would be an adjudication of guilt and uh, time served with court costs. So you want to do that? Yes. All right, are you under the influence? So you're entering a plea of no contest, is that correct? Yes. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? No, I'm not. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? No. The plea form that they gave you, read over that, and did you understand all the rights on that? Yes, I did. Do you have any questions about the rights on that form? No, sir. All right, you understand that the, that this charge is punishable by up to a year in the county jail, up to a $1,000 fine, and that the entry of your plea uh, would result in deportation if you're not a citizen. Understand? Yes, sir. All right, I do find sufficient factual basis. I will judge you guilty of the charge of possession of uh, paraphernalia, be sentenced to the time that you serve, and there'll be court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution to the state. Um, did you want to pay that a total of $273? Did you want to pay that in 90 days, or would you like a payment plan? Uh, payment plan. Can you do $20 a month? All right. First payment due by August 17th. All right, and you'll be released on this case. I'll take no action on the possession of cocaine case that you're out on bond on. Just got to make sure you make all those other court dates, all right? Okay. Mr. Wright, I represent you on that case. Can you call the public defender on Tuesday? Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Your lawyer on the on your possession of cocaine case happens to be here today. She's representing the public defender's office, and she wants you to call the public defender's office on Tuesday to uh, to talk to her. If you just call and tell them who you are, they'll tell you who 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 you need to talk to. Okay. Okay. Just do that on Tuesday. Okay. All right. Okay. Good luck. You got the number. No. Good afternoon. Sir? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your name? Your name? My name is Torian Griggs. Uh, what about Mr. Gonzalez? Did he bond? Sigfredo Sig Gonzalez had a Osceola warrant. What's the booking number, Your Honor? Okay, um, where is that on here? That's a Bond it. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, you're Mr. Torres, is that right? Tor Torian. All right, you're here, uh, excuse me, Tori and Griggs, I'm sorry. Um, you're here because you're arrested on a bond, uh, excuse me, on an out-of-county warrant from Polk County, uh, and there is no bond on that. Um, just to let you know, we will be contacting Polk County to see if they wish to set a bond in that or um, change the release conditions in any way, and uh, we will bring you back to let you know what it is they've they, uh, told us. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. All right. Um, I didn't. I have been going through the probation every period and paying and doing my community service. So this warrant came out of nowhere. So I just don't know what happened. Yeah. Un yeah unfortunately, um, when we get these, it's just the warrant. So I can't even really tell you what's behind it. Okay. It's not an arrest warrant. It's just a. It's just a, a warrant in the system. Um, if you had an attorney on that case that you were that was working on with you, I would contact them immediately. OK, because then they can go to the Polk County Court. We will call Polk County to ask if they want to change that bond. But you're probably more likely to get a result if you um, contact Polk County through your attorney. OK. OK. Just one more right. question, please. One yep. more question. All right. So the, the attorney that I did have covering the case, he's no longer mm -hmm. doing criminal cases. But just try to co contact him and see if he well, can refer unless, me to someone. Unless he withdrew. I mean, I, I can appoint a public defender, but I don't know if they're going to go. They can't really go to that extent. Right. Okay. It's as far as advising them. So he'll get appointed a PD in our office, and I've been telling my out-of-county people what they're Okay. So the, the public defender here will be appointed, and they'll try to advise you in this and see what they can do to help you out. Yes, okay? sir. Yes, sir. All right. Good luck. I'm sorry. Your name, sir? Moises Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez, you're here today because you're arrested on a warrant out of Osceola County um, for a violation of probation, and there is no bonds currently on that. Um, is, can I excuse right. you, sir? Uh-huh. Um, they have a warrant on me? Yeah. From Osceola? Yep. For, uh, never, for violation of probation. They never gave me a warrant. Well, it's, it, could be, it could be an on-site. I have, I, yeah. have, I have my... Because you got arrested on a new charge, then they, then it's an on-site, what they call on-site, so it's a, it's automatic, okay? Um, excuse so, me, Your Honor. I didn't catch a new charge. I have my paperwork here. I haven't caught a new charge. I just got violated for uh, no, um, not being on my curfew. Okay, so there is a violation, though. That's what it's for. All right. Yeah. I, I, all I can do is tell you what it says here. We'll contact Osceola County and see what they can get that straightened out. All right, so thank you. Your name, sir? It's Nari Islam. Yeah, I'm to your right. Your Honor, it's mental health. Okay. All right, mental health on Paul Clark again. And what was your name again, sir? It's Nari Islam. All right, Mr. Lynn, you're here because you're arrested on a, a violation of probation warrant out of Lake County. First one. Uh, there is no bond on that. There's a violation of probation, a second violation of probation. This is more than one case here. It looks like it is. Um, there's no bond on that. Oh, is it? There's also, oh, that's an Orange County case, that's right. And then you were arrested on a charge of grand theft, possession of oxycodone, introduction of contraband into a county facility, and uh, no valid driver's license. Have read the charging affidavit, do find sufficient probable cause. On the new charges here in Orange County, the grand theft, the bond is $1,000. Possession of oxycodone, $1,000. The introduction of contraband, $100 and uh, the no valid driver's license, $100. And I will uh, appoint so, a public defender to represent you on those. So I just have, yeah. a, I have grand theft or what? Grand theft third degree motor vehicle here in Orange County. All right. Okay. And so that those cases have bonds. The one, the Lake County case um, and the Orange County violation of probation don't have bonds though. So you're, you're, you're kind of stuck on those. Okay. All right. All right. Good luck. Public defender will be appointed on the new cases. Your name, sir? James Black. All right, Mr. Black, you're here today because uh, you were arrested in violation of the city code um, or county code for possession of or consumption of alcohol uh, or an open container, violation of city ordinance. Um, did you want to resolve that case? Uh, plead no contest. Yep. Time served court costs. All right. Um, so we had a plea of no contest. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Your Honor. Right. Are, you under the, are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? Uh, no, Your Honor. Have you suffered from or been treated for any mental illness in the past? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. The plea form they handed you from before, did you read over that, understand the rights, and then uh, and have any questions about the rights on that form? 
Did your honor, I didn't hear you. The plea form, the plea form. Did you read over a plea form and understand the rights yes. on that form? Yes. Yes, okay. your honor. Do you have any, do you have any questions about the rights on the form? No, your honor. Okay. You understand that this is punishable by a maximum of 60 days in jail up to a $500 fine and that the entry of your plea would result in deportation if you're not a citizen. Understand? Uh, does that mean I'm doing six months or 60 nope. days or? Nope. I said that's the maximum you could get. But what right. I told you is if you pled, it would be time served. Yeah, I it's pleaded be no time contest. Served. Okay. Yes. Right. So you understand all that, right? Yes, That's Ron. the maximum. That's not what's going to happen. All right. Yes, if you Ron. find sufficient factual basis to accept your plea, I'll judge you guilty of that and post, um, uh, send you to time serve. There'll be court costs and a $50 cost of prosecution, although I think the city has different. No? On, on misdemeanors, it's the same? All right. Two hundred and three. All right. So it's two hundred three. Did you want to pay that in ninety days, or is it like a payment plan? Uh, pay it in uh, ninety days. All right. Pay within ninety days. It is. You're all set. You'll be released on this case. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. I think that's it. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the morning. Well, okay. I'll see you. You. Well, I guess you'll see me, too. Nope. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yes. 